All right, folks, welcome to another edition of Ascension Outdoors. I'm Lyle Johnson. And I'm Goosey Guys. From South Louisiana, I guess I should explain. Looks like the kind of home for my kind of man. We were fishing in Bayou Stream. Dreaming from dream to dream Flipping on what mama nature stored Yeah, you won't believe the things I saw On old Lake Maripal Mama nature, you're gonna drive us all insane For the rustle of their wings in that cold December wind Brings me back to the banks of Maripal Ascension Outdoors is brought to you by Lane's Jewelry and Design on New River offering custom jewelry design along with in-house cleaning and repair. Snow Seafood and Steakhouse on Airline Highway serving great food since 1971. Roland J. Robert Distributor, serving customers with petroleum and petroleum products since 1924, along with super stops located throughout the region. Bayron Smoked Sausage uses the original Louisiana recipe from 1938 to produce the best smoked sausage, andouille, green onion, and smoked boudin around Ascension Power. See this man? He has no character. See this sausage? That's Veyron Smoked Sausage. It has character. Made with an original Louisiana recipe and slow smoked with hickory. Veron Smoked Sausage. Sausage with character. All right, man. Uh, as always, Ascension Outdoors is brought to you by Lane's Diamond Jewelry and Design on East Ascension Street. Across from New River on one side and Airline on the other side. A very good place to not only shop for your jewelry for already made, custom made, sure. but repairs as well. Repairs, you know, you yeah. Do stuff to your jewelry Cleaning. as well. That's right. And that's a good thing to do every now and then. Yeah. So as y'all can tell, uh, we're here at Snow Seafood and Steakhouse. Uh, they celebrated their 49th anniversary, Fantastic. July 27th, and uh, been a long time community institution, bro. No doubt. And as you can see, they serve good food. Uh, my last meal here uh, just a few days ago was uh, pork chop badger on. I'm gonna tell you right now. It was good. So, What's well, incredible, they're still serving it through all these hard times that we're going through right exactly now. That's exactly right. Doing well, and too. they're doing a real good job. they got a big enough right. place to spread everybody out, and service is still excellent, man. You know, and, uh, you know, every now and then, as life goes, uh, you know, we have to say goodbye to somebody right. in the outdoor community, you know, and uh, a lot of people we've known, you know, that have grown older and uh, went on to a different part of their uh, life or uh, afterlife, and uh, but usually it don't hit this close no. to home. And so, uh, you know, we had uh, the passing of your dad, son right. of guys, uh, uh, and so we just take a little bit of time and honor him uh, yeah. and his outdoor achievements as well as being somebody we did love. Well, I appreciate that, and then I appreciate all of y'all that knew my dad, and uh, you know, he uh. He ended, he, he, he ended up being my best friend, you know, right. and I've got many, I've had a whole lot of good friends. You've been right. one of them and I've lost several, but my dad, I mean, he, he was the closest to me. He was a friend as much as he was a dad. You know, <clears throat> I'm glad he uh, brought me up hunting and fishing. Right. That's what, what we did, you know. Right. Daddy came up at a time when, when you hunt and fish to, to survive. To survive, yeah. that's right. And uh, came very good at it. Uh, you know, years down the road, though, Lyle, as he uh, as we got a little older, I guess I was in my twenties, maybe maybe late teens. He told me one day he said, "Uh, I am now president of East Central Sportsman League and getting ready to be president of Louisiana Wildlife Federation. And right. We're getting ready to quit outlawing, and and you going you gonna listen to what I'm telling you right, right. now, you know. And, and uh, and from that day on, I, I started taking a different look at what we did. And he taught me how to be a conservationist. Right. Towards the end there, uh, you know." To take only what you need, right? To treat all animals and people with respect, by all means, right? And to use the the animals and fish that you would uh, harvest in these right. years, that that right there taught me a whole lot. I mean, if you if you go kill it, 
and you're gonna be around him. You're gonna end up cleaning it. Right. You weren't gonna throw it out there in no, the sun and let right. the sun bake on it for two or three hours and all before you went done. And say, oh, he's running. He wasn't gonna buy that. And I appreciate that venue of what he taught me about hunting and fishing as much as anything else. It became a very good conservationist. So you know, we was talking about it a while ago. He sent the Sportsman League. Right. You know, very influential. With the development of that paper, that organization is, I don't know, 50, 60 years old now. Done a lot for this community. Things have changed a whole lot. So um, with that being said, you, you know, it may not be as as, as uh, probable of an organization as it once was. Right. But it was a big leader. That, Louisiana Wildlife Federation, CCA, you know, Daddy was involved with all these things. And, uh, right. And uh, Ducks Unlimited. Ducks Unlimited, no doubt, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's, he's a great conservationist and a good father to me when he, when I tell you what when he come around to hunting and fishing and he was very good at it yeah so I do miss him uh, I, you know I'll try to carry his skills on he told me a long time ago he said one day you're going to probably not be as interested in doing this as you once were and he's right because that, that's starting to happen to me right. you know but I always like to be around people with that same aspect of right. of, of uh, of living hunters and fishermen they're the greatest people in the world in my in my opinion yeah you know and uh he, he became not on, only my father-in-law right. he allowed me to marry his daughter sure. and your sister deborah but he became a good friend of mine as well and uh, uh he taught me some stuff as well about the outdoors you know of course my dad he passed away back in 2001 yep. and he was the same way you know far as uh, uh trying to bring up his kids doing the same thing and so uh I'm going to miss him a lot as well, you know, but uh, he, he leaves behind a great legacy, you know, right. not only in your life and those you pass it to, but mine and those that I can get a chance to pass it to. And uh, my only granddaughter uh, uh, just uh, recently asked me, Papa, take me hunting. Right. And so, That's and my great. daughter, my, her mama wants That's me to fantastic. take me hunting. Yep. So uh, besides my son being involved, we're going to get some more people. That's good. Yeah. Love it. All right, so look, we got a good show for y'all folks. Uh, we went down to the uh, Wax Lake Outlet uh, on the Louisiana Outdoor Riders Association right. Conference uh, with some people from LSU. You know, it's one of the only places that uh, Louisiana is building land because the Chapel Eye flows out there to the Gulf. And they went and showed us how they measured. Right. Very, very incredible uh, 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 way of creating land the way that is developed right. down there in the Wax Outlet, you know, uh, it was a great experience to go down there. And then to go down there and fishing, you know, that, that right. is the tail end of the Atchafalaya Basin down in that area there. That's correct. Uh, especially the area where we went over there fishing at. It, exactly. That, that's pretty neat up in there. I thought it was really a uh, fantastic it, it trip. Is, uh, yeah, and look, it's really interesting to find out the scientific ways of how they measured that land. Right, right sure. You know, and explained it to us. You know. So you get to hear all that, too. And... You'll also get to uh, see a little bit of fishing with me and Tim Carmouche uh, down in that area and then myself in the Chapel Island Basin, so stay tuned. Ready to super stop. Get all you need for your day on the water. What you got to do is pay for read when they get home. All boat fuel, ice, everything that you need to take a quick, safe day, nice day out on the water. All right, where we at right now? We're, we're at the mooring ground, right? Right here. Mm -hmm. Right there, that little, little clear area. They've built this up with dredge foil and uh, made a little bit of a camp. We, we call it Camp Island, actually. Yeah. And uh, so uh, this is managed, this is part of the wildlife management area, uh, the Wax Lake uh, Delta Wildlife Management Area. Oh, cool. And, uh, and, and this is managed by the, owned by state lands, Louisiana state lands, but it's, uh, it gets a lease as a wildlife management area that's managed by the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. So, so all of this is in that wildlife management area. And uh, so, so we are, so this is, this is Wax Lake Delta. We just came down Wax Lake Outlet. Here are the 
here's an exam question for you, Alex. I haven't introduced the boat driver real quick. This is Alex Christensen. Hi. Alex cool, Alex man. is uh, finishing her PhD uh, in the Department of o Oceanography and Coastal Sciences. She's one of my graduate students at LSU. Um, she has an interesting background, uh, undergraduate environmental science. She actually got her master's in engineering, civil oh, engineering. Oh, good wow. job. And then, and then we'll have a PhD in oceanography. And, and that's a new, sort of a, it's a new program at LSU called Coastal and Ecological Engineering. And, and the whole idea is that, you know, we're engineering our coast, mm -hmm. right? right? But we're not, it's not just building bridges, it's building wetlands, yeah. right. you know? And building wetlands is not building a bridge, right. <laughs> and, but it takes engineering, right? Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta get engineering yeah. to think ecological. And that's it, and so, and so Alex is that new breed that's uh, of engineers who actually understand how ecosystems work. And Andre Rivai is a postdoc with me at, um, LSU, Department of Oceanography and Coastal Sciences. He was, he was a student at, in Brazil and is part of a program here uh, and his focus is on mangroves. Uh, but he's really uh, helping run a project we have funded by NASA. We have a, NASA is, is building new satellites um, or they're building new sensors to put on satellites that can actually measure the elevation of water and therefore calculate the discharge of water in sediment and so they're oh. testing, they, they, they do a very extensive testing of those sensors with fixed wing aircraft, right, at 30,000 feet before they put them up on, on satellites. So this is a test bid by, Na for, by NASA to test those sensors before they put them on satellites. Dang. And yeah, it's, and then they wanted to do it at a delta. They want, this is, if it, this is the best place to test, you know, uh, whether they can measure sediment, um, uh, dispersal of sediment discharge load, I guess is the term we use, uh, from a river into an area that um, can, in this case, help build a delta. And they have other applications around the world. So, so Andre is actually funded by NASA, and Alex is headed to, to NASA to Jet Propulsion Lab in January to do a, uh, a postdoc on that same project. So, um, so. Uh, Delta science from space. I, it's yeah. You know, I, <laughs> I guess they won't need me after a while. They <laughs> do everything from the space. Um, You're gonna retire in time. Yeah, yeah I'll retire in time. That's yeah. exactly right. Uh, and then this Wax Lake outlet was constructed to help take the pressure off of uh, uh, the flooding in Morgan, Morgan City. It's really Red River that kept this right. this fresh, and then. Then they, the old river control structure is what really connected the Mississippi down the Atchafalaya. And it, 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 so and that's 30% of the combined flow of the Red River and the Mississippi River. 30% of that is a formula that comes down the Atchafalaya. Hi folks, this portion of our rabbit hunt is brought to you by Duck Roo Seafood and Boudin on Highway 22 in Sorrento. They got the best boudin balls in the world. They got the best boudin. Stocked up seafood. So, Constructed in 44, we use that as a starting date. The, the deltas, subaqueous delta, deltas grow underwater quite a bit before we ever see them. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's exactly what's happening here. And then the first emergence of the delta occurred uh, from the night after the 1973 flood. The one that actually wiped out old river control structure, I guess the irony, isn't it? Some irony. Uh, we almost lost the structure in the 73 flood. Yeah. But that was, that was a flood in 1974, that's when the first em presence of the delta, and you're standing on it. So you're standing on 1974. Wow. And that's when this land was born. Well, this was probably dredge we're standing on, officially. Right over there, was born, was born in 1974. <laughs> and, um, and then, so, and then we have a map where we, we there was a series of, of uh, images and we reconstructed actually a map that has the different ages of the surfaces of the delta. Wow. So we know, we, and I was telling someone, we, we bring ki school kids out here and depending on their age, we know where we can take them and tell them you're standing on land that was born the same year you were. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah. That and those cool. kids get, you know, they born, land is born, yeah. that's the delta. That's the whole concept of a, of a delta. Robert, is, is this the only building delta in the continental United States? Well, it, as far as the major river, there are other deltas, but they're like, I'll give you an example, a lot of people don't think about Mobile Bay. Right. Mobile yeah. Bay has a delta that you right. see when you go over the bridge. If right. you look to the left heading east, 
Uh, that's a built, and that delta is building. building right. Yeah. But as far as what we define this as a coastal delta. So, so this is the oldest, um, the, and so the age, in some respects, these are the oldest. These are what we call the bay head. These pointed areas. That's the deposit that first forms the island. That's the that's where the deposition starts. So these are always the oldest points on these islands, and then the levees start to build with each flood. And it's just that, again that that overbank flooding deposition and 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 then the delta will slowly extend out into the Gulf. And there's a you know the critical sort of uh, formula is you know how deep what's the slope of the of the of the bottom at, out toward the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, if it's very steep, then you know this will only extend out to so far. But if it's very shallow, then this sediment can keep migrating out and out and out. This area of the coast is very flat. When I say flat, I mean the shelf. It, right. it may, many of you know in fishing, I mean, it, 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 this shelf goes way out. It's not like the mouth of the Mississippi. You go to the mouth of the Mississippi, you're in DeSoto Canyon. Yeah. We used to we used to we used to do box cores off the <laughs> ship at the mouth of uh, in DeSoto Canyon. And when we start dropping the box core off the ship, we go in and get a bowl of ice cream. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> we know it'd be it'd be quite a while before that thing comes back up. And uh, so, uh, so that in that that is an area where land is built, but as soon as it's built, it usually disappears mm -hmm. because the subsidence at the mouth of the main Mississippi River is so high that it is hard to build land that remains, and it's it's got a slope that you don't see the uh, mouth of the delta of the mouth of the Mississippi River extend out because it's got that sharp slope and it's sinking. So well, subsidence so ain't as, ain't as, ain't as uh, elephant here as it is over is, there? This does not sink. This land, the subsidence here is about a tenth of the subsidence over at the mouth hmm. of the Mississippi. That's the highest subsidence rates in the, right. in the, in the Louisiana coast. Definitely. Yeah. Y'all want to give me a little opening here before y'all catch fish out of this, this little cut right here looks good, man. Would you give it a try? Yeah, I do it. You ready? Yeah. You rolling? Yeah. All right, man, look, we ain't picked the best day to come, huh, Tim? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you can't pick them. That's right. Anyway, we down here back uh, close to the Wax Lake out. It was here a few weeks ago. Doing a little tour, learning how the stuff was formed and all that kind of stuff. I wanted to come back here and fish this area, so I called the best person I thought I could and bring me down here and do a little fishing in a new spot for me, which is not for you though, is it? No, we, you know, I typically fish this area in the spring, but uh, I figured uh, we got a tournament coming up and figured I'd come give it a day or two, see what it's all about in the summer, you know? Yeah, they got a little something off the go out in the Gulf, two pushing the water up in. So we got a rainy day, a cloudy day, which clouds ain't too bad to keep it from getting too hot, but pushing the water the wrong way. So things ain't kind of working out exactly like we want them, but hey, we're fishing. We're fishing though, that's right. We'll be setting up on something here pretty soon. All right, man. Put that, I tell you what, he puts that darn bait right where you need to put it, man. Yeah, I eat you up. A green trout. A nice one, too, man. Look at that, boy, on that weird looking bait, courtesy of Chick Edmiston. Well, that Chick, I traded you some old speed sticks, and he's in there spinning back here. First fish I caught on too. Very nice, very nice. Well, as you can notice, we are changing location. We was back in the wax area. Now we're up here in Bayou Tesh, man. Uh, been some reports of some fish getting caught here. Uh, uh, fortune wasn't too good back there, but we decided to move up this way. It looks like paint off. Yeah. Another green trout on the plastic. Fishing with a sinker, huh? Yeah. On the 
thing. I think that breeze, the breeze picked up and kind of helped y'all out a little bit, it seems like it. Well, he ain't as big as I thought he was. So it ain't look like a torpedo coming through the water, bro. But that is another nice one, though. That's another beautiful fish. Right here, by your test, this will come on a purple, great zoom, seven inch one with a twisted tail on it, bro. Yeah, you're right. Smell good and everything. Beautiful fish. More and more. Right really? Oh, so, look like look like we can uh yes. have something to mix with some Veyron undoing. That's for sure. Check them out, Veyron sausage, y'all. And look, Veyron makes Martin sausage too. The old the old Martin sausage. They still make that. I don't know how many people really know that, but uh, but they do. And that was a very pop um, uh, very popular sausage in our area for for a long time. And Oh no, didn't get hooked. Didn't even get the worm out the hook out the worm. Man, that felt like a good fish there. I didn't think he was very much and I was right. Now, this is a small bass right here. This is a spotted bass. People call it Kentucky bass, but it's actually a spotted bass. It's got the Kind of broke up, straight line right there, not broke up, but you can always tell by the teeth on the tongue. They got a little patch of teeth, but it's a spotted bass. That's not a, call them Kentucky bass, they call them all kind of stuff. But pretty little fish, but once again, kind of small. Hey, right, that's a good one there. That's a little better fish there. Oh, come on now. Well, might have got their big brother here. It ain't their mama and daddy, but this one here is a couple inches longer. Back on that candy bug zoom worm. Well, that makes number five, although we ain't got much size, but it's good. And Mr. What I thought was a pretty good fish back there, but this is spillway fishing. You know, you get a little bit of brim bites, you get a bass bite every now and then. And that felt pretty good. Let's see if we can't get us another one. Hey, right. I told you there ought to be one here. Oh, another little spotted bass. Ain't very big, but he's here. You rascal, you. You need to grow up for sure. Spotted bass. You can tell by them white belly line and then them teeth give it away for sure. Plus the, uh, Mouth is small. Some people kind of call them small mouths, but they're not really that species. They... Yeah, you're right. Oh, yes. Come on now. All right. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Well, I don't know if about the farmer's almanac or what have you, but whenever we came in this spot right here, it's the first little run out we fished at and didn't get a bite. So. First throw I made in it this time, I caught a fish. He's small, but nevertheless, he is a fish. So action has picked up since we got in this area. So finally got in some good water, you know, nice, clean, stained water. We've been it was in that clear water this morning that you could see. Count the blades on coontail grass three feet down. That's really not a good spot. All right, dude, you grow up a little bit. Welcome back. Uh, this portion of Ascension Outdoors is brought to y'all by Snow Seafood here on the Airline Highway, right on the outside of Gonzales, Louisiana. Um, look, the first picture I got tonight is uh, Gage Becknell. He's pictured with a nice string of bass. Him and Dad, uh, Josh, caught fishing in Chaplau Basin uh, this past July. They were using plastic worms and uh, black and charred truth jigs. That's a nice mess of fish right there, that young man. Uh, Look like he's gonna be quite a fisherman, right? Yeah, you're right. There. Been a lot of fish caught in that Chaplau Basin this year. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. All right, this picture I got right here is Brantley Babin, grandson of Craig White, holding his nice bass he caught in Gibson in Ju on July 10th, fishing with his papa and dad, Josh Babin. Trio caught this string of fish in watermelon red wacky worm. 
That's a beautiful mess of fish in that, oh, yeah. bay when that young man caught right yeah, there. Yeah, them brand. young boys catching some fish now. Yeah, no right. doubt about that right <laughs> They there. do it, bro. Oh, yeah. Here's, a, here's another young one right here. Well, he's an uh, 11 year old Reeve Savoy, and he caught a uh, nice string of panfish and chaffalaw bass in there. Brown and, and orange tube jig kind of remind me of old snack with salad colors, That's right. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> spill away to get the crawfish. Orange and brown always right. seems to work good in the yeah. chaffalaw bass for some reason. Anyway, they're fishing uh, uh, three and a half foot underwater uh, with a cork. Uh, 20, 30 yards off the bank on suspended grass. Right. You know, a lot of times at this time of the year in particular, yeah, that, that water starts uh, going out in the spillway and these right. canals and stuff. Them fish move out to the middle a lot oh, where yeah, that water out of doubt. gets a little cooler and a little That's deeper exactly out. exactly right. And then they figured that out. That's a nice mess of fish. That right is, there. sure is. All right. That's a proud papa sent us this picture right here, Bert Latham. It's his oh, seven-year-old yeah. grandson, Lucas Lee, son of Alicia and Dustin Lee, caught this nice bass fishing with a beetle spin in a pond next door to his home in West Monroe. And uh, rumor has it, uh, that land right there belongs to the duck commanders. Oh, really? Yeah. And so, uh, anyway, young man, very proud of this bass right there. Oh, that's a great fish, son. Yeah, you're right. Thank Bert, you for sending your picture in. Bertie looks a lot better than you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get into that. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a nice picture right here. And again, the fish right here look better than most of the guys in this picture. Anyway, the girls uh -huh. in this picture look good. Here's Ryan Logan and Emily Fawcett along with Davis, Stacy, and DJ J. Roll. Uh, they had, a, had a, an 18 pound tuna, nice fish there. Some yeah, beautiful right. red snipe and rainbow runners. They was fishing with Mexican Gulf Fishing Company on a trip to Venice as, uh, back in July. Yeah. And as always, man, I've seen many of good fish hung on that board right there. Oh, you ain't kidding, man. Oh, you see some wild stuff there. That's good the catch, fish, though, y'all. Fishing capital of the world. Oh, no right? doubt. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's it's awesome. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. All right, this next picture we got right here, I'm going to tell you all, it don't happen like this all the time. Aaron Burstall and Dylan Stafford went put in at Fred's right. to do some uh, jug fishing for catfish and sackerly fishing at night. Yeah. And uh, as you can see from the picture, it was pretty successful yeah. in the catfish and the sack of lake. But while they were doing that, they kept seeing frogs. Yeah. And so they took upon themselves <laughs> to put that in there. So they got a, about a sack full of frogs along with all them fish they caught. So uh, uh, they caught the sack of lake on shine until they ran out. And then they caught a few more on jigs. And then they caught them frogs when they got done. Oh, yeah. They got, that's hey, a man. nice beautiful mess that's youth right there stuff. that's right yeah things like that i used to do that myself i had some some trips like that where i tripled up on all that stuff uh that burst old boy yeah he's he's really into oh, fishing yeah. yeah he's crazy about it he loves it oh he got yeah. it bad he, you know, he got it bad and but I, that is that's incredible right there and look guys i miss them days right there i can tell you that right now but uh you need to stay up all night long and i'll do that right, that's right there that's right i'm all right with that still it, it looked Here's a, here's a beautiful picture right here. Okay. Jackson Gotro, this young man was fishing with his dad, Trey, uh, back in June in a pond by the house. He landed uh, this beautiful bass right here using a red bug uh, finesse worm. You know, this little guy, look at that, look at that smile on his face oh, and the way he's putting you, that bro, bass out there right there. No, congratulations, young man. Beautiful fish. That fish is big as you. <laughs> Almost. <huh? laughs> That's right. All right, our last picture for tonight is a partner of ours, Joe Wiley. He caught this trophy brown trout fly oh, yeah. fishing in the South Fork of Snake River in uh, late July in southeastern Idaho. They were fishing drift boat style, how they do, you know, put it in and go down with the sure. uh, current, you know, and uh, fly fishing with a guy from Orvis uh, from the lodge at Palisades Creek. And uh, I'll tell you what, the guide held the fish up because that's the biggest brown trout he's ever had oh, in really? his boat. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty yeah, one. Beautiful, beautiful fish. One. That's right. Snake River, that's probably where Lewis and Clark went, huh? I think I so. That's, that's right. That that's right. Beautiful Con fish. Congratulations, right Joe. Yeah. All right, folks, look, we appreciate y'all tuning in. Thank you, Snows, for hosting us tonight. And uh, thank you, Sonny Guys, for uh, being a part of my life and uh, uh, helping me become what I am in the outdoors. Thank y'all. Thank you, Sonny Guys. I love you, man.